Chapter five, the working cell. So let's start out with some basic energy concepts. So energy makes the world go around in the sense that living things have to be able to utilize or assimilate energy uh, or process food, for example, to be able to harness energy. Uh, and we can talk about energy, but what is it? By the way, the sun is the source of the energy on planet Earth for essentially all living things. All right. So talk a little bit about conservation of energy. Um, and we'll give us a little definition here in terms of us being able to get a grasp of what energy is in terms of biology. OK, so energy can be defined as the capacity to do work uh, or to cause change in the sense of uh, this weightlifter <clears throat> is doing the work of lifting the weight that requires energy. Or you can think of it as this weightlifter is causing the change of lifting these weights off the floor. All right. Uh, we grow in size. You know, when you were a child, you were smaller than you are now. And that takes energy to pack on, you know, the millions and billions of cells that you have to make you bigger and bigger and bigger. Cell division. Uh, duplication of DNA, uh, things that drive mitosis, that all takes energy. So E here for energy is uh, used to move an object against an opposing force like gravity, like this uh, weightlifter. <clears throat> and even if we don't ex think of gravity all the time, it is constantly around us and we have to use energy to work against gravity. So walking across the ground requires energy because you're having to essentially lift your body a little bit by lifting your limbs, etc., to be able to take steps and you're fighting gravity all the time. So that requires energy, sometimes a lot of energy, depending on what type and how much work you may be doing. <clears throat> so uh, we can think of energy in two basic forms. One is kinetic energy, and that's the energy of motion. So if you climb up a diving board and you jump into the water, the fact that you're moving, that's kinetic energy, right? Uh, you know, if you have a waterfall and the water is rushing down the mountainside, that's kinetic energy. That's energy of motion. And you can feel that, right? If you happen to get hit by this diver or hit by water that's falling, you can feel that force, that energy of that water. Now let's contrast this with what's called potential energy. This is stored energy, uh, usually due to a <clears throat> object's location or structure. So for example, again, if you're climbing up the ladder to be on this platform and you're waiting, you have potential energy that can get converted into, which is stored energy. It can get converted into kinetic energy once you jump off the diving board, right? Um, for example, uh, if this person is sitting here and they jump off and they land on the platform, right? You can feel the change of potential of kinetic energy. The potential energy is just stationary stored energy. But if he jumps down, he or she will feel the impact on the platform here. And that will be the force of the potential energy hitting the uh, platform. And potential energy in structural molecules are the potential energy that's found in the chemical bonds, in particular in the food we eat. And we'll focus on carbohydrates like glucose, blood sugar. It's a, <clears throat> sorry, it's a monosaccharide, if you remember that term, a simple sugar, but that's our blood sugar that gets into our cells that gets broken down through cellular respiration. And what happens is the chemical bonds get broken, that stored energy is released, and it's transferred onto another energy molecule called ATP. So a little uh, video here, get the volume up, on energy concepts, energy. Energy is the capacity to cause change. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion. Energy that is not kinetic is called potential energy and is energy that matter possesses because of its location or structure. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, but converted from one form to another. 
This property is called the conservation of energy. The bow and arrow start out with low potential energy. As the archer's arm pulls back the string, kinetic energy from the arm's motion is converted to potential energy in the tense bowstring and arrow. When the bowstring is released, the stored potential energy is converted into the kinetic energy of the moving arrow. When the arrow hits the target, its motion ceases. If energy is neither created nor destroyed, where did the energy of the flying arrow go? Let's rewind and look at kinetic energy in more detail. When energy is converted from potential energy to kinetic energy, some of the energy can be used to do work, but some energy ends up as heat, a type of kinetic energy. Heat is the random motion of atoms and molecules. As the arrow flies through the air, heat is generated by friction between the arrow and air molecules. When the arrow strikes the target, all the energy becomes heat energy. The heat energy is rapidly transferred into the air and spreads out. Heat energy is a very disordered kind of energy. It has the highest amount of entropy, or disorder, of any kind of energy. Where do our muscles get energy to perform work, such as pulling back a bowstring? Our bodies use the chemical energy from food to perform work. Chemical energy is a form of potential energy. When your body breaks down food molecules, the stored potential energy from food can be converted to kinetic energy. The stored chemical energy in food is released in your muscle cells during the process of cellular respiration. Using oxygen, cellular respiration converts chemical energy from food to another form of chemical energy called ATP. Water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2, are byproducts of cellular respiration. The potential energy of ATP can be converted to kinetic energy. Some of the kinetic energy is used to do useful work, such as pulling back a bowstring, but the heat energy that is generated cannot be used to do work. All right, so some basic concepts there, <clears throat> talking about the conversion of kinetic to potential energy. Whenever there is a conversion from kinetic to potential energy or from potential to kinetic energy, some heat's always generated and it's lost into the environment. So for example, um, in the little video here, it showed you um, chemical energy being released from food molecules, and that was blood sugar, glucose, and getting broken down via cellular respiration and getting converted into ATP. That generates a little bit of heat. And then the ATP energy is used by your muscles to pull back the uh, bowstring on the arrow, bow and arrow, and that generates a little heat. Okay. Um, that's why when you exercise a lot, you're utilizing a lot of breakdown of glucose to convert it into ATP, and the ATP is used to drive your muscles. And when you exercise a lot, you're doing that a lot, and each little conversion generates some heat, which is why your muscles and your body uh, heat up. When we exercise, we feel warmer, but our bodies have systems to deal with that, like sweating and having more blood come to the surface of your skin so that you can radiate away heat. Okay, continuing with energy. The concept of conservation of energy, which the video talked about, um, it's not possible to destroy or create energy. It can only be converted into one form or another. And within, whenever there's a conversion of energy, there's always some heat that's lost or generated and dissipated or lost into the surrounding environment. So energy can only be converted from one form into another. So we see here a, a fuel like gasoline <clears throat> or a blood sugar, glucose, is rich in stored chemical energy in the chemical bonds that are holding the atoms together. The energy can be released during combustion in an engine so the larger molecules get broken down into smaller molecules. The breaking of the chemical bonds releases energy. Some of the energy is used to drive the wheels of the vehicle. So the potential energy is converted into the energy of motion, kinetic energy, and some heat is generated, liberated, or lost into the environment. That's why the engine gets hot. Okay. 
at the cellular level, so that's a machine, but at the cellular level in your body, right, that biological machine, blood sugar, glucose, and oxygen get broken down via cellular respiration. <clears throat> the chemical bonds get broken in glucose. Some energy is released, put onto the ATP molecule, and it's a conversion of energy. So that breaks, so, uh, that generates some heat. And then the ATP molecule now has energy to drive cellular work, like say muscle contraction, and that will liberate some heat. And then these are the waste products. So heat, it's a type of kinetic energy that is measured or is contained in the random motion of uh, atoms and molecules. Uh, when you heat something up, for example, like you're heating water in the morning to make coffee, for example, you're adding heat to the water right by the stove gas stove for example and what happens is as the water heats up as it gets hotter the random motion of the molecules increases right when the kinetic energy is high enough some of those molecules will break the surface of the water and leave as um, water vapor or steam so all energy conversions generate heat so focus on the conversion of energy from potential to kinetic or from kinetic to potential. There's always going to be some heat that's generated, right? The total sum of energy is essentially constant. If you were able to add up the potential energy in a molecule and the kinetic energy of mo movement or work and the energy of heat that's released, it would be constant in terms of all the energy that you have at the beginning of chemical reactions and all the energy that's available at the end, including the heat. Okay, now let's look at chemical energy in biological molecules. <clears throat> Excuse me. So molecules, uh, the molecules of food are biological molecule, right? Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, even nucleic acids, or considering gas or other fuels, they have potential energy that's referred to as chemical energy in or held in the chemical bonds of their molecules, okay? based on the arrangement of the atoms. That energy is stored in those chemical bonds. When those chemical bonds are broken through oxidation or combustion, like if you were to burn gasoline, chemical bonds are broken, in this case rapidly, and you get a rapid release of a lot of heat and energy. So the energy can be released by chemical reactions, which are breaking bonds. At the cellular level, we're going to focus on carbohydrates, again, blood, sugar, glucose. And at the cellular level, excuse me, where's my cursor? The chemical um, uh, breaking of bonds on something like glucose happens relatively slowly so that the energy that's released can be efficiently harnessed and ultimately transferred onto the ATP molecule. Contrasting that to say burning gasoline, <clears throat> the chemical um, breaking of bonds is much more rapid. So living cells use the chemical energy stored in food molecules, right? Whether we are consumers like animals that have to ingest food or producers like plants that photosynthesize and generate their own food and then break down their own food through cellular respiration. So if you remember, photosynthetic organisms can both capture sunlight energy for, via photosynthesis producing sugars and feed themselves by breaking down their own sugars that they produce. Animals like us can't do that. We have to ingest food in order to break down the biological molecules and harness energy that way. So larger fuel, fuel molecule, food or fuel molecules are broken down into smaller, smaller waste molecules after things like cellular respiration. And for cellular respiration, like in animals, humans, the waste molecules are carbon dioxide and water. <clears throat> the carbon dioxide leaves the cells, gets into our bloodstream, we breathe it out, and the water some of it stays in the cells, excess water leaves the cells, gets into your bloodstream eventually, and if you need to, you urinate it out. 
So releasing energy through the breakdown of our food molecules.